I'm so glad to be with you guys. Man, this is so much better than where I spent the whole last week. Um, I, I had the flu, and so I spent Christmas in bed, and then I've spent the last six days in bed, and then finally I'm here, uh, and I get to be with you, which is super fun. And I'm glad that uh, I wasn't sick this week because getting a guest preacher and then having them get sick is a really, really bad thing. Um, the only other time, I didn't preach this last Sunday on Christmas Eve um, at my church because I was so sick and it brought back the only other time that I haven't been able to preach. And it was when Jason asked me to preach here one day and I got a kidney stone and I literally called him from the hospital and go, I'm not going to make it. And he's like, you're the guest preacher. What do you mean you're not going to make it? <laughs> all right. So praise God, we're all here. Um, all that to say, these are the ramblings of a prayerful and sick man. So We'll see what happens. Um, Christina wanted, um, it's my lovely wife, we, we were going to start taking down the Christmas decorations, and I, I wouldn't let her do it. Um, it's too soon. I didn't get to experience Christmas. And so uh, she said, well, then it's all on you, because I don't have any more time except this weekend. So I guess this next week, I will take down our Christmas decorations and our lights. The snow is all gone. The presents are already opened. Um, and now we enter January, and January is just dark and cold. Um, I looked up sun up; it happens at 8 a.m., and sundown is at 4:30, which means if you work a normal job, I'm sorry, you don't get to see the sun for a while. Um, and it got me thinking about the importance of light. Uh, part of our Christmas present to ourselves this year in our house was um, some lights in the kitchen. I have this house that is in Lake Forest Park, and it's built on enjoying natural light, which is awesome during the summer. But during the winter, it's a little less so. And um, we realized that the skylight over our kitchen made it not helpful to cook at 6 o'clock in the evening when we have dinner. And so we're sitting there cooking in the dark, and then one of our other Christmas presents was um, some new knives. That's probably a bad combination. Um, and I didn't want to slice myself up, and so we got new lights put in over the prep area. And Because um, cooking in the dark is pretty frustrating and dangerous, and honestly, doing life in the dark is pretty frustrating and dangerous. Um, I came to faith at 19, that was when I met Jesus, and up until that point, my life was a series of trying to find joy and fulfillment in all sorts of things, making the best decisions I could, and um, I often made decisions that didn't lead to life, um, and so I can only describe it as going into a brand new house that you've never been in, somebody else's house, and it's pitch black, and you're trying to navigate the furniture. And what I found as I did life was I would make these choices, think they were going to be a good one, and then, ow, slam into something. And um, the worst part was I wasn't just hurting myself. I'd end up hurting the people around me, too. Um, and that's probably my biggest regret about that time. And meeting Jesus um, was like turning on the lights. The pieces came together. And all of a sudden, um, the big picture of how God made us and um, what we were made for began to come to light, and I could see what I was doing, and I could see how certain um, actions I would take would not lead to a good place. And then for the last 25 years or so, I'm trying to figure out what this Jesus thing's about and follow him as best as I can. And what I find is that he actually affects every area of my life, and that the more I put him in charge of those things, the more I walk with him, um, the easier life seems to go, and the better it seems to go. Um, marriage works when you're um, having a Christ-like attitude towards your spouse. It's not an easy thing, though. Um, when I go to work, I work a little differently because Jesus is a part of my life. And um, even who I am, and I used to be kind of a habitual liar. I grew up in a pretty manipulative house, so I learned those skills. Um, that's shifted as God gets a hold of me. And right now I have an 18-year-old niece who's living with me, who's starting off in community college, and she is so much like I used to be. Um, and I am so thankful for what God can do in our lives um, as a result. 
I don't know if you do this. At the end of the year, do you take stock on your year, like do a little inventory maybe on what's going on in, in your life and in the world? And um, this year has just felt a little dark to me, honestly. Like, uh, I'm somebody who gets great joy out of bringing things together, and it feels like there is so much division right now. Like, the political sides are divided more than I ever remember them. Um, we've had massive uh, attempts to, like, deal with the racism that's going on in our country. We have had gender and sexuality dividing people and, um, and violence and stuff. And I'm like, man, let's just close the door on 2017. Let's start new. But I want it to be different this time. I don't want as many dark spots. I don't want dark spots in my life. I don't want to be going through this year plagued by the feeling that maybe I'm just not good enough or with not enough confidence. Um, I don't want the loneliness and isolation that I felt at times. And so um, I want to see God do new things. I want to see God do bright things. And um, it hasn't all been terrible this year. My wife and I are doing pretty good. I'm... uh, I stepped into the role of being the lead pastor of our church, which was a big step for me, and, I, and it seems to be working out pretty well. Um, our church has moved again and again and again, and each one of these things you would think would knock us down a little bit, and we seem to actually be getting stronger as a result of it. But I don't want to settle just for that either. I don't want to settle for good enough. I want to settle for God's best. And I want to see God's best not just in my life, but I want to see it in your life too. I want to see it... Um, what happens when, when God really gets a hold of your life? How would it change? How would it transform? That's what keeps me going. And um, to that end, I want to read a scripture. It's actually my favorite Christmas story. Um, and it's kind of a weird one, which makes sense for me, I guess. Uh, but my favorite Christmas story comes from the book of John, and it's, I'm going to read 1 through 5 and then uh, 9 through 14, and this is the Christmas story in John's words. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of mankind. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness does not overcome it. Some of you have walked through some darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. The true light that gives light to everyone is coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of a human decision, nor of a husband's will, but born of God. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory. It's the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Let's pray. God. Thanks that you brought us here. Thank you that you came to be one of us. What a dramatic thing you did in diving deep into this dark, dark lake to find us and bring us back to you. Um, Be our light. Be our guide. Speak to our lives right now. We love you. Amen. Um, What a gift, man. Jesus, the light of the world, came to be one of us. He gave up heaven to be one of us so that we could become the children of God. And when you receive Jesus, when you follow Jesus, when you walk with Jesus, you have light on your life. Now, um, I live in Lake Forest Park, and I live up this crazy long driveway that's shared by like a bunch of houses. And um, lately, I have had to walk the dog in the dark. And so one of the Christmas presents that I had to buy myself was a headlamp. Do you know how silly those headlamps look? to wear a little headlamp to go walk my dog now. It's, it's utterly ridiculous. And um, sometimes Christina and I go for walks together and, and we walk my niece's dog along with us. And every now and then, me and my ADD brain, I decide to stop and get the mail and Christina's wearing the headlamp and suddenly I find that I have walked away from her and now I am in pitch black and it is so hard to do anything. Um, 
If we want to have a better life in 2018, it's good to walk with somebody who is light. Um, and when we walk with Jesus, when we actually let him inform, how am I going to respond to my wife? Because she's being a jerk to me right now. Although I was probably a jerk. Okay, anyways, you can see where I'm going. Um, Jesus begins to change us a little bit. He gives us a little moment of light, and we begin to see things a little bit differently. We don't need our ego as much when Jesus is around. Um, We get a little bit humbler. We do the right thing a little more often. Um, Even when I interact with politics, and and right now this is so polarized, um, it's so easy for me to look at the other side and go, man, you're a complete idiot. Look what you're doing. And and, uh, And then... When I pray about that, I go, man, they're not. Maybe I actually need a little Jesus in my life. Jesus said something. It was really profound about what doing life with him is like. He says in John 8, 12, and and I want to put this in the message because the message is so good with this. Um, Jesus once again addressed, addressed them, and he said, I'm the world's light. No one who follows me will stumble around in darkness. I provide plenty of life, of plenty of light to live in. Plenty of light to live in. That's a good spot to be. Um, I used to play basketball with my brother in the backyard, and uh, we had this one little lamp that was supposed to light up uh, our backyard, and um, it was crazy. When it started to get dark, that light would come on, and all of a sudden our basketball game just shrunk to that little bit. Um, and it was only like four feet, and he's five years older than me, so I don't remember ever winning a single game. But I do know my only option, because he was so much taller, was to take shots from the outside, and I could never hit a shot from the pitch black. Um, it was just too hard. Um, plenty of light to live in. I used to think becoming a Christian would shrink my life that my life would actually have a bunch of limitations around it of things that I couldn't say and things I couldn't do and how I was supposed to act and all those things. And what I found instead is that the more I walk with Jesus, the more it feels like I have plenty of space for abundant life. I have plenty of things that I can engage in that are actually life-giving and they're mysterious to people who don't know Jesus yet. Jesus lived, died, rose again so that we could have plenty of abundant light to live in. What could be better than that? Um, Well, I actually think there is something better than that, which is weird to say as a pastor. Um, I think God actually has something even better in mind than Jesus coming and becoming one of us so that we can learn about his life and try to live like him and have a better life as a result. Um, And I found it in Matthew 5. It's part of the Sermon on the Mount. He gathered with a bunch of uh, people who were following him, much like we're doing here, and he went up on a hill, and he began to say some incredible things. And one of the things that he said was this. You are the light of the world, a town built on a hill that cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Did you catch it? You're the light of the world now. God does something even better than just coming to earth. After he rose again, he sent his spirit so that those of us who decide to become the children of God who want to follow Jesus, he puts his spirit into our lives And then as he shines through us, we become the light of the world. And now instead of one light in Jerusalem, in Bethlehem, for three years that we get to watch, now we got lights all over the place. God wants to light up the world through us. And that means that if my workplace is going to be a brighter place, it's because it's going to get lit up by Jesus' spirit, which means it's going to happen through me. Um, if my family is going to be a brighter place, it's going to be because I look at Jesus and I say, Jesus, how can I be a better husband? And hopefully my wife does the same thing. 
How can I be a better friend? How can I be a better neighbor? And this actually does work on the neighborhood scale. Um, Christina and I are trying to figure out if we like Lake Forest Park, if we're going to stay there. Lake Forest Park is weird. It's a weird neighborhood, man. It used to be part of Seattle or Shoreline or whatever, and then it broke off. It's this little five miles, and it broke off because they don't ever want to cut a tree down. Nobody's allowed to cut trees down, and if you cut a tree down, you better replant a tree. And so the neighbors don't actually want to spend time with each other, but they do want to congregate if you threaten to cut down one of the trees. Um, it's the most bizarre thing, and Christina and I are like the least eco-conscious people that we know. So here we are surrounded by people. We went over for coffee with a neighbor, and they spent the whole time talking to us about how much we need more parks, but we don't actually need play areas or anything in them. We just need more park area so that natural trees can grow and, and have more of them in Lake Forest Park. Um, it's bizarre. So do I want to stay there? And then this occurred to me. Maybe Jesus actually wants me to be light there. We've been tossing around the idea for six months of having a soup night for our little block where we'd make a bunch of soup and they could come over and we could meet them and get to know them and hopefully tell them that we care about them. Sounds like a delightful idea. Except my neighbors are weird. <laughs> and they love trees and I don't. <sighs> but maybe if Jesus wants to actually make my neighborhood a friendly place where I want to live, maybe it's going to happen because I'm willing to become light there. You see, there's this tendency that I'm finding in me, and maybe you share it too, that when uh, work isn't going right, you pray for work to change. Um, when your neighbors are weird, you pray for them to change. And when your wife is weird or your husband is weird or your friends are weird, you pray for them to get it right. Um, but what if God's plan is actually to change us and then for us to be lights where we go so that other people can see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven? When I came to faith, it was through this family, the Smiths, um, wonderful family, and I, I was just like, figuring out what is this Christian thing about? What does it mean? And I asked a really honest question to the matriarch of the family. Her name was Kareen Smith. And I said, what do you pray about? Like, what, what should I be praying for or about? And she said, you know, the thing I pray most about is, is my family. And then she made a clarification. Um, it's a really important one, and it stuck with me. She said, I pray most about how to be a better mother. How do I be a better wife to my husband? Um, that means that we're actually open to light changing us first. Um, it's so much easier to pray about my niece getting fixed and my wife getting fixed and my job being fixed. But that doesn't actually lead to light. I have some projects in the new year that I'm going to try and tackle. Um, one is I'm tired of this headlamp thing. The whole headlamp thing has got to go. And so I found a friend who knows how to do landscape lighting. And so I'm talking to them about how do I like, get landscape lighting for this entire long driveway so that I don't have to wear my stupid headlamp until I get down to the streetlights. And um, I don't understand it all that well, but I know that the next step I have to do is to go buy landscape lighting that has like 20 lights. And, um, and then we're going to bury a cord and it's going to intersperse the light like every five feet so that I can actually walk down safely with my dog and not wear the stupid headlamp. Um, wouldn't it be dumb if I took all those lights and like put them in one corner of my garden and just had the brightest corner of my garden ever? It would be a waste, man. Um, if the only place that we express our faith, the fact that we are Jesus followers and that we live a little differently because of it, is when we're here or in a small group, it's a little bit like that. God has this incredible plan to not just be the light of the world, but to light each of us up and then shoot us outward so that there is a Christian on every street, in every workplace, in every neighborhood who is living out the love of God so that people can see who God is.
And the reality is we all need light. This isn't just for non-Christians. Um, if you need light, there is a little announcement about life groups. One of the best things you can possibly do is find some Christians that you can trust and begin to let them in on whatever closet it is that's in your life that you don't want to mess with that's dark right now. How I encountered Brookview, um, besides guest preaching, was at one point, um, my father had just passed away. I was absolutely devastated. I had nothing to bring to the table. I was used to being a pastor and bringing things to the table. And I showed up at this men's group, um, a life group, at Eugene's house, actually. And um, I walked in, and I don't know what they thought of me, because I walked in, and everybody kind of talked about why they were there. And, um, and I said, well... I'm here because I just lost my dad and I don't even know how to move forward. And these guys surrounded me with a little bit of companionship, a little bit of love, a little bit of grace, a little bit of forgiveness, dropped all the expectations on me and let me just be. And it was honestly those guys that walked me through grieving my father the most. You see, I don't know if that was their intention. I don't think they had a ministry plan to do that. Um, But they were following Jesus, and they did it with me in their midst, and I needed some light at that point in my life. It's a powerful thing that we do when we let Jesus be the light of our life. Um, I want to close with this. Uh, My first encounter with Christianity, my grandfather was a pastor. I thought it was kind of a dork for being a pastor. Um, I didn't respect his faith at at all, really. Um, I didn't understand it, and my experiences of church were not um, something that made me want to go back to it. But I would go over to my grandfather's house as a little kid, and he would always let me pick out a toy. And he had this drawer that was like the toy drawer. And um, if you can imagine, like, Oriental Trading Company's faith page. (laughs) Like... They were all like, I don't know, like, I, I'm kind of, these two words don't go together, but they were Jesus junk, all sorts of Jesus junk, like little yo-yos that said, I love the Lord and stuff like that. And I was like, this is weird. But um, so the one thing that I always looked for in there that I thought was the coolest, I actually brought one today, was um, glow in the dark stuff was kind of cool. Like glow in the dark crosses. This is what he had in there. Oh, glow in the dark crosses. And I'd be like, well, that's somewhat cool. I mean, it is a cross, but it's kind of cool. And, and I would grab it. And the first thing that I would do is go run to the darkest room that I could find just to see if it would glow. And um, I would get there, and it wouldn't glow very long because it had been sitting in a cupboard. And then I realized something else, that I need to actually like go charge this thing up. Lived in Southern California, Santa Monica. It was usually bright and sunny. And I would go outside on his front lawn, and then I'd go like this. Which I can only imagine the neighbors thought his grandkid was just like a super Christian or something. But I thought maybe if I held it up, it would get closer to the sun, and then it would get really, really bright green glowy. And then I would rush to the darkest room in the house, and I would sit there with it. And as soon as it ran out again, I would do it again and again. It's New Year's time, and and the disruptions of Christmas are over, and it's time to find new rhythms. I'm going to probably sign up for a gym again and attempt to make my target weight. We'll see if it actually happens this year. But those healthy rhythms of my life need to get back in place, and uh, I want some to involve God. I want some to involve my spiritual life. And I found this, this scripture in 1 John um, that I'm going to use to kind of launch off of, and maybe you want to join me. 1 John 4, 15. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and we rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. And this is how love is made complete among us, so that we will have confidence in the day of judgment. In this world, we're like Jesus. Know and rely on the love of God. Get charged up. Let him light your world up. Bring every area of life 
especially the ones that feel dark, into his presence and see what he can do. And then once you're charged up, live and love like Jesus in this world. Love that less than perfect neighborhood, family, workplace. Love others like God loves us without limit, without condition, without expectation of anything from them. Shine like Jesus to the people around you. Find new creative ways to be light where you are. That rhythm, getting charged up, lit up by Jesus in a community of people like we are now, and then heading purposely into dark places, not asking God to fix them, but asking just to be light in the midst of them. That is a plan where I think 2018 can be brighter for us than 2017.